In this video, we're going to go over the second part of determining a molecular or empirical formula. Uh, this one's going to be from combustion data or from a elemental analysis data. So the problem says a patient is, is found to have an unknown compound containing only carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen in their bloodstream. So we can write down that our unknown or our compound is going to be CX, HY, and Z. So it says a sample of the compound is combusted, producing 5.77 grams of CO2, 0.855 grams of H2O, and 1.51 grams of NO2. Determine the molecular formula of the compound if the molecular weight is 130.15 grams per mole. Okay, so this is a very similar setup to what we had in the last video. The only difference is instead of getting percent composition data, we're given masses of some combustion products. So if you remember from elemental analysis, what's going on with this combustion is we're taking a unknown C, X, H, Y, N, Z. We're reacting it with O2 and we're making these compounds carbon dioxide, H2O, and NO2. And the carbon that's in that compound winds up in the carbon dioxide. The hydrogen that's in that compound winds up in the H2O. And the nitrogen that's in that compound winds up in the NO2. So the fact that we have masses of each one of these products, 5.77 grams, 0.855, grams, and 1.15, I'm sorry, 1.51 grams, that's really important because built into those masses is the mass of each individual element, carbon, hydrogen, and, and nitrogen. And if you remember in the previous video, our first step, step one, is always get the number of moles of each element in the unknown. So in this case, instead of um, doing our assumption where we're going to assume 100 grams, we don't have to do any of that because we already have specific masses of these combustion products. So we have to go back to our knowledge of elemental analysis, and we have to remember how to extract out the, uh, the number of moles that, of each element that are built into those combustion products. So let's look at how we'll do this for carbon dioxide, and then the rest will be relatively straightforward once we kind of remember. So we have 5.77 grams of CO2, and what we need to get to is moles of carbon. So in order to do this, we have to go to moles of carbon dioxide, because once we have moles of carbon dioxide, we remember that for every one mole of carbon dioxide, we have one mole of carbon. So then from there, we can get to the moles of carbon. So to go from grams to moles, we need the molecular weight. And then to get from moles of CO2 to moles of carbon, we have to look and see what the ratio is. So for every one mole of CO2, that's going to equal one mole of carbon. So let's get this started. So if you look up, if you get, calculate the molecular weight for carbon dioxide using the periodic table, you're going to get 44.01 grams of CO2 for every one mole of CO2. So now we're in moles of CO2, and we... To get from moles of CO2 to moles of carbon, for every one mole of carbon dioxide, there's one mole of carbon. And we get that from the uh, molecular formula of carbon dioxide. So then finally, we're, we're there. We've gone, we've gone through our steps um, to get from the mass of the carbon dioxide to the moles of carbon. And that's where we need to be for our first step. So when you multiply this out, uh, you do 5.77 divided by 44.001, you get uh, 0.131 moles of carbon. Okay, so now we're going to do the same steps, but for the hydrogen and the nitrogen. So we have 0.885 grams of H2O. If you look up the molecular weight, that's 18.02 grams for every one mole. And when I say when to look up the molecular weight, what I'm saying is, is you're going to the periodic table and you're calculating it. You're, you're not actually, there's not going to, you don't look it up. You, you have to compute it. And now in this case, for every one mole of H2O, because there's a ratio of two hydrogens for every one H2O molecule, we have two moles of H. So this is going to give us 0 0.098 moles of the hydrogen. And then finally, we have 1.51 grams of the nitrogen dioxide, which has a molecular weight of 46.01 grams for every one mole of NO2. And in this case, this is one mole of NO2 for every one mole of nitrogen. So that's going to give us 0 0.0328 
moles of nitrogen. Now, if we remember for step two, uh, I'm not going to write it all the way out. I'm just going to refresh your memory. For step two, we divide by the we divide the various moles that we get for each of the elements by the mole amount for the, the one that has the smallest number of moles. So in this case, the one that has the smallest number of moles is 0 0.0328. That's the nitrogen, and that's going to give us a 1. So when we divide the 0 0.98, 0 0.98 by the 0 0.0328, we get 4. So our empirical formula is going to be C4, H3, N1. So we followed our steps. Now, the reason why, uh, in this case, step three, if you remember, I said is optional. Because we get all round numbers, we don't get any 0 0.5s, 0 0.33s, 0.25s, uh, 0.125. Uh, because we don't get any of those round fractions, we don't have to uh, multiply through by anything. So step three in this case is not relevant. So now to get the molecular formula, we have to figure out the ratio between the empirical formula weight versus the molecular formula weight. So if you calculate the empirical formula weight in this case, you're going to get 65.07 grams per mole. So if you take 4 times 12 plus 3 times 1.008 plus 1 times 14, which is for nitrogen, you get 65.07. So if we want to get the molecular formula, we're going to take our molecular weight divided by our empirical weight to see what our multiplier is. So we take 130.15 grams per mole. We divide it by 65.07 grams per mole. We get a nice round number of 2. So doing this, our molecular formula is going to be C8H6N2. And what I did was I multiplied each coefficient by 2, which is what I came up with there. Okay, so this reviews the elemental analysis. Um, again, the elemental analysis video really goes into detail about the, the calculations that I did here, so I don't go into it in too much detail. But you can see how the steps can apply to both, and as long as you follow the steps, as long as you can get to moles, get the mole ratios, write your empirical formula, and then compare the empirical formula mass to the molecular formula mass, um, you'll be in business. Um, so th this, this is how you get an empirical formula and a molecular formula from either type of data.